And hello, hello, you all. Welcome to Code Life. Today, we will be playing with real time in Lightning Web Components. I have two examples that I want to show you. One is using the EMP API or the Enterprise Messaging uh, Platform API. And also, I will be showing you how to connect to a WebSocket server from Lightning Web Components. This is to give you um, a real-time experience while building uh, web applications using LWC. One is going to react to the events on Salesforce, like platform events or change data capture events, and the other is going to pretty much act on external events that are coming from a third-party service. My name is Julian Duque. I'm a principal developer advocate here at Salesforce, and I'm super happy to be again with you here in Code Life. One thing next week is TDX. So we will be celebrating this great event in San Francisco. And sadly, we will not have Code Life. But you can join us on Salesforce Plus for free and take a look at uh, all the content we have ready for you all and great announcements, some demos, some great interviews, everything happening live at Trailblazer DX. Please, in the chat, let me know where are you joining from and if you are going to TDX. I just wanna know, I will be around, I will be there. So if you are going to TDX, please say hi, I want to meet you all. Fantastic. Uh, let me switch my screen. Remember, we have the developer website, developer.salesforce.com, where you can find all our recent campaigns, blog posts, podcasts, videos, events, all the information that you, developer, need to be uh, having a great experience with Salesforce. Also, all the documentation, APIs, and different sections where you can find uh, organized resources for each of one of the products that we have for you. This is uh, tailored and pretty much uh, curated for you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And remember, you can ask any question. I will be monitoring the chat as well. If you see me uh, looking at this, I have the chat screen in this place. Fantastic. So let me see the chat. Um, hello, Lucas, Max Pineapple. Uh, we have a Salesforce learner. Great that you are learning here. Joaquin from Argentina. Maria Ludmila from Argentina as well. Saludos. I was drinking mate uh, earlier, so I, I love Argentina. And fantastic. Great, great. Thank you very much for joining me. And it's time to start with the topic for today. So what I have is I already created the components, at least the UI. So we don't spend a lot of time in the UI. I will show you what I did pretty much and how I'm binding the UI with the, with the JavaScript class. But we are going to be focusing on the JavaScript logic today. So I have two different UIs. One, to use the EMP API and the other to use uh, WebSockets. With the EMP API, I kept it very, very simple. I have an input field where I'm going to be uh, typing an event name. This event name could be a platform event or a change data capture event. And I'm going to be subscribing to that, to that specific channel. Then I will be generating events, either triggering a platform event, or triggering a CDC event. And we will see here the payload that these events generate. Basically, after you get the payload, you can perform any other operation. We are just taking a look at the payload. The operation is going to be up to you. For WhatsOpkits, I tried to have like some sort of um, example. So have you used certain sites that lets you back or donate money for a specific charity or like a pre-order for a product. So we are going to be doing something like this, 
where we can see real time uh, all the money we have been raising and who was the last person to donate money to this campaign. So we will keep in here uh, messages that we are receiving from a web application that it's already running on Heroku. But I will show you also how I build that WebSockets application so you can also learn um, how, how was it. In future Code Live sessions, I will be focusing more on the API side of things. Okay, how to build a WebSocket server from scratch or server sent events or working more on open API specifications and things like that. But right now we are going to be consuming this uh, WebSocket API from Lightning Web Components. Fantastic. Okay, my you're welcome from India. Nice, nice. My webcam got uh, got blocked, so I'm going to be removing my face because we don't need my face right now. We are going to be focusing on code and the UI, but later I think I will be able to fix what happened with the webcam, and in the end I will be able to to say goodbye. Sometimes, I know it happens, my webcam decides that uh, it's time to, to freeze. Okay, let's uh, start with the UI code that I have. So let me open uh, Visual Studio Code for uh, the Lightning Web Components project. So I have a Lightning Web Components project, or pretty much a Salesforce project, that it's already connected to a Scratch org, and I have uh, multiple components. One is the application container. The application container pretty much have this uh, tab set with the two tabs, and I have two different components, events and backers. Events is the one we are going to be using for the MP EMP API, and backers for the WebSockets example. Events, as I mentioned, it has a box where I'm going to be showing you the result, that JSON uh, payload that we received from the event. We have an input. This input will receive the channel name, depending if we are going to be receiving platform events or uh, CDC events. And I have a subscription button that will let me subscribe to the event or unsubscribe to the event. So let's focus on this specific uh, component and let's start with the EMP API. What is the EMP API? So the EMP API or the Enterprise Messaging Protocol or platform lets you listen to events from Salesforce. You have the EMP API connector on Lightning Web Components. You also have access to that connector from Aura. And there is also a Java connector. So you can listen for events in Java as well using the EMP connector. Underline this use uh, Comet D, which is the uh, messaging protocol that Salesforce uses. So we will be able to listen to any, any message that is coming from here. How to add it to my component? Basically, I will need to import the following methods and I will be explaining you what to do with those methods. So let's go to the code, import those, and we will be using those later. So what I have here is uh, a variable that's going to capture the result a variable that is going to capture the channel name or the event that I'm going to be subscribing, and a variable that just manage, manage the subscription status, if we are subscribed or we are not. And this is just for, for the button or for like certain flow purposes. For example, here I have the button label. If I am subscribed, I will set that label to unsubscribe. Otherwise, it will say subscribe. So once I change the state of that button, I just going to show uh, the text that happens there. And I have the handle channel name change, which just captures the input. 
cool. What I need is implement the handle subscription button. So with the handle subscription button, I will be able to either subscribe or unsubscribe to my event. What do we need first is we need a channel name. If we don't have a channel name, we are not going to let anybody subscribe. So if we don't have a channel name, don't do anything. Or you can show a message or you can um, start a pop-up, something like that. I am just um, doing an early return. Now, let's handle the subscription um, flow. So if this is not subscribed, I will handle the subscription logic. Subscription logic. Otherwise, I will handle the unsubscription logic. We can write everything here. I prefer to use um, like separate methods to keep things uh, tidy. So let me create two methods. One is going to be handle subscribe. And the other is going to be handle unsubscribe. And here, pretty much I'm going to be executing the handle subscribe method that I created. And here I am going to be executing the handle unsubscribe method that I created. I'm checking the chat to see if there is any questions. No. Okay. Salesforce learned. Noted. It's my camera that decides to freeze myself, but I hope you are listening to me well and taking a look at the screen and I'm incrementing the zoom. So we, we have more, more real estate here. Cool. Now let's start with the subscription. Subscription or the subscribe method lets me subscribe to a channel. When I subscribe to a channel, this will give me a subscription object. With this subscription object, we will unsubscribe in the future. So we'll need to keep a reference of the subscription object. So let's create a reference of that subscription object. It's going to be empty. And this will be used on the subscription. Cool. So let me now Go ahead, execute, subscribe. The first argument is going to be the channel name. And you can take a look at the documentation to see the different arguments the subscribe method receives. The one is going to be the channel name. The second is the replay ID. Maybe you want to replay an event if you have the ID. Otherwise, you can pass a minus one to get new events from the beginning of the stream. So I'm going to be passing minus one to receive new events. And the third argument is a function, is a callback. Remember on the previous session that we were taking a look at an, at an asynchronous JavaScript and I show you how to work with promises and how to work with callbacks. This is an asynchronous operation that receives a callback. And also the subscribe method returns a promise. So we will be using both promises and callbacks on this operation. This is why it is important to take a look at the previous session with was uh, mastering asynchronous JavaScript. Fantastic. So we need a callback here and let's call it message callback. Since this is a function, I will need to define that function. So the function message callback is going to get the response. And later I will perform an operation with that response. So when I get messages, when I get responses from the events, I'm going to be executing this method always, every time. Now I will need to get uh, the subscription. So to get the subscription, I resolve the promise, 
this also is giving me a response and that response is pretty much the subscription object. So now I am setting the reference in my Lightning Web component with that subscription. What else do I need to do? I need to say that I am subscribed. So now I am subscribed to that specific channel. And then I will need to handle the responses. And I think is the data property. Let me confirm from the payload. I think it's the payload property, but I'm going to be assigning the whole response to the result variable here. And I want to do it this um, pretty much uh, organize so it's going to be readable so to result i am going to make that response a string and i'm going to be uh, formatting this uh, string this uh, json stringify with these two other parameters is going to format this json so it reads like a block not as a line I will show you the difference just with one line. Okay. And for the unsubscription, we will execute unsubscribed. We will pass the subscription object. And then we can get a response as well, but we are not going to do anything with the response. And then I will pretty much say that it is not subscribed and I can um, clean the result and maybe if I want I can clean the channel the channel name but let's keep the channel name in there because maybe we can uh, we want to resubscribe okay so far we have used two methods from the EMP API subscribe and unsubscribe let me see if there are questions. Hey, hi, good to see you. Thanks for coming. Oh, yeah, cameras. I don't know. I have a supposedly a very good camera, but it freezes sometimes. And, and I think it's the software I use for streaming, which is OBS. That does something funny here, but don't worry. The most important thing right now is the code. So we have using two methods, subscribe and unsubscribe, but the AMP API is giving me three other methods. The on error, the set debug flag, and the ESM is EMP enable, which is a variable, not a method. On error is very important. This is the method that's going to be executed every time an error happens in the connection. So I'm going to be registering that error within the connected callback. Once my uh, my component mounts, I want to start like reading errors with the EMP API. So how this works, on error receives a callback that gives me an error object. And I will be just printing out this error object on the console. We can do better error handling, like showing a message, like a toast or something like that. Right now we are just printing the error into the console. Set the bug flag, very useful for development purposes, is going to add more log messages to the JavaScript console. So that way we can see if it is connecting, um, what types of messages are like interchanging in the connection. So for this example, I'm going to be setting the debug flag. And last but not least is to check if my JavaScript has access to the EMPJS library. So I can just check if is EMP enable, sorry, if not is enable, I will pretty much print 
don't support EMP. And I'm going to return. Basically, I am not going to, to let register for events or something like that. I can keep like a variable and show a message. No, sorry, you, you cannot perform operations with EMP, but I'm going to keep it simple here. And I think with this, we can try to deploy. I am not using the show toast, so I can delete this. Let me try to deploy. I'm going to be deploying to my scratch org. Hopefully I don't have any errors, but if we have errors, we will fix them. Awesome. I deployed my component. Now I can go to my org, refresh, and huh, we need an event so we can test this out. So let's create a platform event. I'm going to set up platform events. Let me create one, new platform event. Uh, let's call it code life, code lives. Okay, this is my platform event, code life. And I will need to add a property. So let's add a custom property here, a text. And this property, let's call it a message. Please, somebody in the chat, give me a message to trigger the platform event. I just want to see uh, how, how it looks like. Like a, a phrase or something like that. And let me open the developer console so we can quickly uh, trigger that platform event. Let me execute anonymous. Aha. So I have code from before. Let's call this code life E. Code life E. That's the event. And a message TDX23. Thank you very much, TDX23. Okay, I have a message ready to that specific event that I'm going to be publishing with the event boss, but let's subscribe to that event, to that channel. So I'm going to pass event, the name of the event, subscribe, and now I'm listening. If I go to the console, these are the debox methods. Now, I have the subscription messages here, but I have not triggered the platform event. Let's trigger the platform event, execute, and real time, I am getting the message. But as I told you, this is not readable. I, I, it's very difficult for me to read a JSON like this. So one, ja one JavaScript trick is to pass two arguments to a stringify. The arguments here on the callback are going to be null, which is a function, a replacer. We are not going to be using any replacer function here. And the other one, it, it tells me to add the spaces to my JSON. I always add two because I use two spaces when I'm coding, but you can pass four spaces depending on your preferences. And let's uh, deploy this. And we can trigger another platform event with Hágale Pues, Jorge Mario. I like your, your message in Spanish. Uh, let's do it. Well, Hágale Pues is like, let's do it. So Hágale Pues, let's do it. Sending. Oh, I, I, I will receive the same thing because I need to refresh, of course to refresh the, the, the deploy that I just did. I'm going to be subscribing to this channel again. And the other message that I'm seeing in the chat, TDX23 trigger awesomeness. Okay, TDX23 
trigger awesomeness. Execute. Now, this JSON is readable. Now it has format. So I can take a look at the payload. This is the message I'm getting. So I can extract that property and do something on my, on my screen. I have the replay ID just in case I want to get this event again. It's telling me the channel and it's telling me the schema ID so I can consult the API and see what's the shape of my message. But this is for platform events. Let's see how can we listen for a, a CDC event. Oh, nice. You see, I, I have an error with unsubscribe. Let's fix it. I'm trying to unsubscribe by passing or, or by calling it as a promise. But no, these receive a callback. That's my mistake. He's expecting the callback, not a promise. I will be able to avoid that by reading the documentation. Unsubscribe is telling me clearly that the second argument is a callback, but I was trying to do everything by memory and, and that doesn't work. We need documentation, folks. Okay, let's deploy again. And while this deploy, I'm going to at refresh and show you how can we subscribe to a CDC event. Cool. We need a CDC event, so let's go to setup, change data capture. Let's enable CDC for account and maybe for contact. Uh, let's add the CDC for account and contact. Let's save. So now if I perform any operation with account or with contact, I will get an event. How can I listen to those? Well, instead of a slash event, I am listening with slash data, account, change event. And now I am subscribed. What we need to do is perform account operations. So let me open the accounts page and let's do this uh, so we can see them. side by side to check the magic of real time. Okay, side by side, listening for the event, let's uh, create a new account, TDX23, saving the account, it will trigger an event, I'm getting the event immediately here, which is of type create, and I have pretty much the payload with the name, and the header of that specific change. And I can edit this, for example, uh, TDX is awesome. And I can add an account number, 23, and an account type. This is a customer direct. I will save this. And now you see I have an update and it's giving me the fields that I just updated. So how, how, how powerful is that? I mean, I can get in those changes real time on my Lightning Web components and I can create amazing experiences. Now let's see if unsubscribe works. It works. I can try with contact. So let's do a contact change event. And let's create a new contact on this account. And this contact is going to be Miss Maria. I had Maria Ludmila Puglia, Maria Puglia. And I'm adding this contact here. And when I save this, I get an event with the information, the type of event and the entity name. So this is super powerful to listen for changes on my Salesforce org. 
It is possible to have this subscription on load. Oh, of course, you can do it on the connected callback as well. I am doing it on, on demand, so it's uh, easier to show the subscribe and unsubscribe methods. But you can do it on the connected event, depending of, of your needs. Fantastic. Any questions so far on the AMP API? Can you try CDC with custom object, please? Just for an example. I love challenges. Uh, why not? So for that, I will need to uh, go ahead and quickly create a custom event, a custom object. Custom object. Uh, let me go to the object manager. Create a custom object. And the custom object. Let's uh, call it um, code life, code lives. And with the custom object, let me save. Oh, it's already in use, of course. So viewer, viewers, viewer. It's already it's already in use because I'm using that API name on the platform event. So now I created viewer and let me add a field just in case uh, the field for this viewer is going to be of type text and this is going to be a, I don't know, a location or something like that. Let's see this next and enable this everywhere. Okay, let's continue, viewer layout, save, awesome, and let's uh, create a tab so I can easily go on and interact with my viewer, so create a custom object tab, the object is viewer, and um, next, oh, I need the icon, of course. Let's put uh, the first one, apply to all profiles and save. Okay, I have a custom object as requested. Let's listen for the event. So I think this is a viewer C no viewer change event or if it is custom i will need to pass the c here i uh, i have a doubt uh, about the name of that channel so change event custom object and object support A standard object name in the object. Change events are available for all custom objects defining yourself for strong and a subset of standard objects. Does anybody know? Uh, show user one who opens a component have a permission for account or account change event? Uh, yes. In this case, I'm using the system administrator. So yes, it will need to have uh, permissions. Okay. I think is with a double um, with, without the C, but just adding the, the double lowercase. So subscribe to viewer. Now let me go to viewer here. Let's create a new viewer. Uh, code live name. Um, it was Max Pineapple location from the cyber web let's save and i am not getting the event here because i might me i might be missing the proper channel name for a custom event let me check again 
uh, channel name custom event in Salesforce. I am missing something. Yeah, change uh, change event is my subject. That's what I'm passing to my to my specific uh, to my specific uh, listener here. Viewer change event, but it is not receiving any message. Oh, I have an error. The channel specified is not valid. Okay, when I'm trying to subscribe, I have an error. Oh, of course, of course, of course, I have to enable CDC. Thank you very much. See, you ask me things live and we learn together. So let's go to setup, enable CDC. Of course, the channel doesn't exist. It makes total sense. Uh, change data capture. I need to enable that um, data capture for viewer. So let me type viewer here. Now this will be supported. And I can try again. But now let's edit viewer change event let me see if i don't have an issue now i don't have an issue it's subscribe so and uh, location all around the world save and now i get the message so the message is an update on the entity name viewer, which is a custom object, and I'm getting the record ID. I'm getting the field that change, which is location. I have the replay ID and the name of the channel. Thank you very much uh, for all the people that helped me, especially Shashank that remind me that I had to enable this as a CDC. Beautiful. Let's go to WebSockets. So for WebSockets, I have my interface. I will be having here the percentage of the campaign, the amount raised. I have a goal. I need to, to get $1 million. And right now I don't have any money. So I will need to get money from you all. No, I'm kidding. This is going to be all fake, of course. I have a Node.js server that I created with Fastify. Fastify is an OJS framework. Uh, this is pretty much what I use to create APIs uh, really quick. And Fastify has a plugin called Fastify WebSocket that lets me enable WebSocket support for Fastify. So let me show you how this works. So pretty much I am registering the plugin to my Fastify instance. And then on my API route, I am defining a function and I'm passing as a second argument to that route that it is a WebSocket. So the handler of the function has a first argument is the connection object. The connection object is the one that has, that has the socket to perform the operation and the request which represents the HTTP request just in case you want to have an authenticated WebSocket session, etc. So what is a WebSocket? Normally, when I'm interacting with a web application, I'm performing HTTP requests, either GET, POST, etc. But a WebSocket is a specific channel that the client establishes with the server so I can send and receive messages on that channel. So this is more like a TCP or a socket channel. When I perform a request using a WebSocket client to this web server, there is something that it's called the connection upgrade. So that connection is transformed from HTTP to a socket connection, but I need a specific client to perform that. JavaScript or the browser has a class called WebSocket, which is the client to connect to WebSocket servers. Since we are in, in Salesforce and obviously there are like security restrictions, I had to enable this um, website 
as um, on my trust site, I had to create a rule for my Heroku web server application and especially add permissions to the connect source because it needs to connect to that specific resource. And I have this application that I show you deployed to Heroku. There is a tool that I always find useful called Web so Cat that you can find on Google. Uh, you can install it on Mac with Brew. Uh, you can install it on Linux. I am not sure if this exists for, um, for Windows, but there are other WebSocket clients that you can use to test these uh, APIs. So I will be connecting to the WebSocket that is running locally. So I'm going to run my server locally. I'm going to be connecting locally just to see the type of messages this is returning. And I'm getting uh, backer information. So Hovar donated certain amount of money, Brock, Mirna, Caitlin. This is totally random. And every backer is sending money on each second. Remember that I show you how to build this delay function. So I'm using um, a promises and async await here. And pretty much I am creating a message with the backer and amount information, and I am sending that message on the socket. So the client will be connecting to that socket and will be receiving those messages. Messages are strings. So it should be like a plain string or a JSON. I am sending a JSON as a string, so I will need to receive that string back in my JavaScript client or in the Lightning Web component, and parsing as a JSON object. But I am just sending these two properties, backer and amount. And I'm using the Faker.js library just to fake the name and an amount. Faker.js library, super useful for test. When you are writing tests and you want to fake any, any name, city, random number, Faker is the way to go. So this is already deployed to Heroku. We can make changes uh, and deploy again. Let's say I don't want to send this uh, every two seconds. Let's say uh, every, every three seconds. So we deploy to Heroku. Let's commit my changes. Read the uh, more delay time. Let's... Uh, deploy to Heroku those changes while I start writing my client in my component. So I have the backers component. The backers component has a text that shows the campaign name, has a formatted number that shows the percentage, the percentage raised, has a formatted number that shows the goal, has a formatted number that shows the amount raised, and has also information of the last backer. The last person that donated money is going to appear on the screen. And what's the amount that this person donated? And in my component, I don't have anything. I just have the variables. I just need to implement the WebSocket connection. To implement the WebSocket connection, I will do it on the connected callback. So in the, immediately after this, um, component mounts, I will be connecting to that specific uh, server. So let's keep a reference of the socket here and let's connect. How to connect? This is an instance of the WebSocket class and since I am connecting to a HTTPS or a secure server, I will use WSS. If you remember locally, I, uh, I am using WS, which is unsecure. Remotely, I'm using WSS, which is secure, HTTPS. And that's because it is deployed to Heroku. And I need to pass the Heroku URL. Uh, this is the Heroku URL. 
and the API route is WS. WS is the one that is serving me as the WebSocket connection. Now I am connected. This will have some events that are going to be triggered from the documentation. We can take a look at the events. Open, message, error, and close. So the open event is when I establish a connection. Message is when I receive a message. Error is when something fails. Close is when I am disconnected to that specific server. So for open, I am going to be adding, okay, this WebSocket, add event listener, open, and the function is going just to print connected to WebSocket server. And I don't need the event here. And the other one is the message. So, WebSocket, add event listener. When you receive a message, give me that message. And that message comes on the data property from event. So the payload that I'm receiving, it's going to be uh, event data, and I need to parse it as a JSON object if I want to start performing certain operations. So remember that this object has the backer and the amount. And so far I have $0, so the amount is going to increment. So this amount raised is going to increment by the amount that is being donated, which is payload amount. But if you take a look at this, the amount here is a string. Since JavaScript does type coercion, if I am trying to do this operation here, JavaScript thinks, oh, this is a string. It will try to create a string and the formatted number component that we are using is going to fail. So we need to perform a casting of this variable. You can use it either by using the number class and surrounding this, uh, this amount, or what I do is just a, a trick. I add a plus sign before the variable, and this is going to do the coercion or the conversion to a number. And then, Let's get the backer information. So my last backer is, um, that's the name and the amount. Oh, let me see what I'm, what I'm getting here. Amount. So last backer could be pretty much name, amount, um, it's pretty much the payload. So I can do this, assigning the payload as the last backer. And I need to calculate the percentage raise, raised, sorry, how much money uh, have I raised? So the percentage raise is equal to the amount that I have divided to the goal and I think that's the only thing I need to make this work. Let's deploy the component. So basically, every time I receive a message from WebSockets, I am performing this operation. I am changing the values on my Lightning Web component. And this is real time. When I change to my browser, I, I will open the console just in case we have something odd. I open the WebSockets tab and we are receiving data. We are missing the name, but we are receiving data and we are missing the name because here we have backer 
And here we have name. That's why. Let's change the API. So let's change this instead of backer. Let's change for name. And I want to send messages uh, faster. And I want to be able to send more money. Let's say minimum uh, 500, maximum 3,000. So the values increase faster. And let me deploy these changes. Change API. Deploy to Heroku. It's going to be pretty fast. So now I am sending name and amount. So it's the same object that I'm receiving here. So I don't need to change anything. And supposedly the information is going to get faster and with more values. So the amount of money that I'm going to be raising is going to be more significant. Let me refresh. WebSockets connected, and now I'm getting more money faster, and this is all real time. Please, any questions? Let me know if you have questions, because what I show here is something that excites me a lot. This is uh, one great uh, way to capture data. From a, from a server. So please tell me, tell me, what do you think? If you have any questions uh, about either the EMP API or about either web sockets. Well, it seems, it seems everything is clear. Awesome. So what else do we need to do here in the component is pretty much manage the status. If we have an error, make sure uh, we are handling that event. So here we can uh, create on the web socket, add an event just in case we are receiving an error. And if we are receiving an error, print that error to the console or maybe handling or showing a status information. And if we disconnect to the server, maybe we have a button that connects and disconnects depending on the service you are using. For example, if you are uh, rendering a chart in real time, getting data from the server, you can maybe start that um, getting information instead of just getting it immediately after you mount the component. Depending on what you wanna do, the API is uh, very simple. You have the WebSockets class, you connect to that server, and you attach events. Those events receive a callback, as we saw on the previous code live, and with that callback, you operate. You pretty much uh, change the values of your Lightning Web component, and those values are going to be changed real time. Awesome, awesome. Yes, this is going to be recorded. This is going to be available for you all after, after the recording finishes. I'm going to be um, sharing the code. I'm going to be sharing some resources and URLs on the description. Those take some time because we do some post-production of, of the videos and I need to commit and clean up these repositories for you. But sure, make sure to check the code live uh, videos on our YouTube channel and you will see everything in there. So let me refresh to see if this is working again. Nothing, nothing breaks, nothing breaks. I'm getting money, percentages are going up and I just hope these persons that are pretty much getting together to learn WebSockets are able to raise that amount of money. Fantastic. That was all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this content. Remember, next week we will not have Code Life. Next week is TDX. You can watch some content on Salesforce Plus. If you are not registered, go ahead to Salesforce Plus, register for free so you can enjoy TDX as well. 
If you are joining TDX in real life, if you are going to the event, please say hi. I will be around. Uh, don't be a stranger. I will love to know you there at that event. Thank you very much for joining me. And after TDX, we are coming back with some LWC content. I have planned LWC composition, and we are also uh, talking about LWC events, how to communicate between different components through events. Thank you very much. Thank you, and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.